<laughs> All right, I think I'm ready. Let me get a little, little bit of a drink of water here. All right, everybody. Hope you're all are doing well. Uh, those of you that are new to the channel, my name's Jason. Today, I am working on an iPhone 6 Plus that came in around 10 years ago. It has been here way, way, way too long. This PCB came in for data recovery. Now, I'm going to read to you what the customer said about this PCB. It says, U1503 L50, wait a minute, is this the beginning of the request? Holy cow, they actually started it out like that. Okay, U1503, L1500, L1519, and U1501 were cleared to resolve major shorts, was left with a two amp short pre-prompt to boot, found that SDAM, I'm sure you meant SDRAM, was the culprit via thermal imaging. I need data recovered, photos, password. Oh wait, you don't need to know his password. He needs photos, all right? So here I've got this board in front of me. This is a pretty unique situation. I have worked on thousands of phones and I have not ran into this before. So I'm going to try to figure this out in front of a camera today. I don't know what I'm getting into, but I'm going to try to kind of catch you up to speed. All right. When I first brought this board in, I did not have a thermal camera. I do now. And this thing has been on the shelf for, I don't know, a, a month or two because I was not able to make any heads or tails out of it. And, um, I brought it back onto the bench with a thermal camera and was able to find something really unique. Although, to be honest, it should not have taken a thermal camera to get me to find what it is that I found. So here this board is in front of us. Here we've got the supply on the screen. We are gonna bring over a test lead here and we're gonna hook up some Juicy to VBAT, all right? So here we're hooking up uh, power to VBAT. There we go. Now I'm going to turn the power, oh, the power supply is already on. Ah, rats, I'm one step ahead of myself. All right, so now I'm gonna turn the power supply on. And you can see this board right off the punch, it's drawing 150 milliamps. Now, that's not a lot of current. And for me, gosh, it's been so long since, it's been a few weeks since I worked on this board. It was difficult for me to tell where the heat was coming from. It seemed like the CPU was heating up. So let me, um, let me show you where I'm at on this, all right? Here is my thermal camera. Now, I went with, I first ordered a Seek Compact Pro, which I really wasn't crazy about, but honestly, I think the reason why I wasn't happy with the Seek Compact Pro is because I didn't know how to use a thermal camera. It was just really blotchy and crappy, and I just, I didn't really, I thought, this is totally, completely useless for board repair, so I sent it back. And then I ordered a uh, FLIR 1 Pro. Okay, so here I'm holding a FLIR 1 Pro. Now I'm gonna show you all how I use the FLIR 1 Pro. I imagine you would do the exact same thing no matter what thermal camera you have. Now, uh, for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm gonna put this camera on a tripod so that it holds still for you. And what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna quickly show you how I adjust the camera to make this actually usable. I'll be right back. All right, how are we gonna do this? I actually have not used this camera on a tripod yet, so I don't, man, this tripod sucks. The distance between your camera and what you're looking at is really important. So once you get this adjusted, if you pull it out and you move it in like this, your, act, your, your two visible images and your thermal image will, they'll, they'll become misaligned. Here is the way this looks, just as soon as I open up the app. And, as you can see, we have two images here. We have the visible image and we have the infrared image. And with the FLIR 1, uh, actually FLIR 1 Pro, you can switch this from visible. Here's the visible image of the board. Um, here is only the thermal image. And here is uh, the MSX. I don't know what that acronym, I don't know what that stands for, but basically it's, it's the two images combined. Now, as you can see, they're horribly unaligned uh, right here. You won't be able to see where I'm pointing with my finger. Maybe I'll highlight it while I'm editing, but you can see the SIM tray really well. It's horribly misaligned. So the first thing I do to make this a usable camera is I adjust this MX, MSX distance, okay? This aligns the two images. So you just pull it down, and I've gotten to be really fast at this, guys. I just, I use this camera all the time now. I pull it out, plug it in, bam, find the short. This thing has already paid for itself. It has paid for itself a couple of times already, and I've only had it for a few weeks. I regret having not bought it sooner. I really do. So now that we have our image aligned, I think aligned, pretty much aligned, the next thing that I do is I turn on, let's, okay, I turn on this IR scale at the bottom 
and then I lock span. And then down here at the bottom, I adjust our temperature range. I slide it up higher. Now, when I slide this temperature range up higher, you'll see that the board fades out. Like all the heat spots, you know, just fade away so you can tune this out to nothing. Shit, I had it on. Okay, so here's how we adjust it. We've got the IR scaled on, it, on at the bottom. We've got lock span on. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna adjust this temperature range. We can just slide our finger across this temperature range at the bottom and tune out all the noise. Basically, we've told it to look for hotter temperatures. This thing's sitting here at room temperature and you can actually see heat signatures. So we just, what we do is we adjust this until right to where any signs of heat disappear okay so now we've got an image that looks more like the 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 more expensive cameras it's really really simple you just basically change the distance select temperature range and you're good to go it, it's so quick and easy okay so now we've got the power supply on the screen you've got the thermal image we've got all my settings on the screen here oh and one thing about the flare one it does pick up reflections like your heat will reflect in a mirror if you take a picture of yourself in front of a mirror like you will see the heat of your body reflecting off the mirror it's, it's pretty wild okay so let's go ahead and turn the power supply on I'm just gonna bump it and you've got the supply on the screen there oh you see that is everybody with me Let's adjust the heat up a little higher. Okay, let's turn the power supply on. Oh, there it goes. Is everybody, um, is everybody following along here? We got, oops, don't let it go too long. I don't want the heat to swallow everything up. So basically, we've got this little IC here that gets hot first. You can actually see me pointing at that, yeah? and then the CPU gets hot. So we're gonna dig into this a little bit farther. Let's do this one more time. We're gonna turn the supply on and watch what gets hot first. Strobe driver, right? Isn't that the strobe driver out there? It gets hot first and then the CPU gets hot. So that's all we need out of the thermal camera. Just a, a quick glance at this thing and now we know where our, where our hot spots are. This thing, it has been saving me a lot of time. I don't want to rant too much about it because like, I don't want you guys to try to think I'm trying to sell this thermal camera because I'm not. I'm just simply saying, um, I've went through, I did the Seat Compact Pro and then this one, and this, this is the one I stopped with. Now, one of the big deciding factors for me, other than price for getting the FLIR One Pro instead of the more expensive $800 or $2,500 camera, is that I can pick this thing up and carry it with me. I can use it more than right here at the bench. We have been having a blast with this thing. Like you can, if, if you're looking at somebody and they walk across the floor, you can actually see their footsteps behind them because it is so sensitive. You can see their footprints on the floor. If my son is playing in the floor and like moving around on the floor, you can see his handprints and, and everywhere he's put his hand. And it's like, it is so freaking sensitive. You can see through clothing. Like you can just look right at, look right, right at somebody's body through their, not that I've tried that. All right, hang on. All right, I'm getting, I'm blushing. Let's let's move on with this repair. All right, so customers looked at it with thermal imaging. I have looked at it with thermal imaging. Let me show you what is royally screwed up about this board, okay? Let's get it under the microscope. So as you can see, uh, just as they, as they said, uh, chestnut has been removed. There are, uh, there are other things missing. Our uh, near field communication, our NXP little dude there is missing. Now, I'm not sure. This thing has been here so long. I don't know if I did TriStar or if they did TriStar. That, that might be my TriStar. Um, but no really obvious signs of damage. Now, he suspected PP1V8 uh, SDRAM or just or SDRAM. So we can get on that line right here at this crap. I mean, cap. And let me show you what we get, all right? We're going to test this in... I'm going to get criticized for dragging this out, but this really is a kind of a cool problem and I'm, I'm hoping I can figure it out. I don't think that I will. I mean, this came here, this came, I can't say I don't think that I'll figure it out. I think I'll figure it out, but this came here for data recovery and I don't think I'm going to be getting the data off of it, but let's see. Let, let's try it. 
All right, so here we are under the microscope. I'm going to put the multimeter on the screen so that you can see my readings. Let's go ahead and see what we get in resistance mode to ground on PP1V8S DRAM. And I don't remember which side it is here. Okay, so must not be that side. We're getting flat short. And on this side we get, what's going on here, Might I'm not in auto, ah, I'm in mega ohms. Of course we're gonna get zero. So let's try this again with my meter set to auto. And on this side, that must be ground because we're getting a dead short. And on this side, we're getting 20, 23,000 ohms, guys. So as you can see, PP1V8S DRAM, not short of the ground, right? Let's see what PP1V8S DRAM measures whenever we hook power to it. So now we have the multimeter and the power supply on the screen. I've got my multimeter set to volts mode. I'm going to turn the supply on and I'm quickly going to switch over here and I'm going to check this line for voltage. So... Here we are on PP1V8S DRAM. What the? Now it's going to read 1.8 volts? Are you serious? What? Are we still drawing current? 130 milliamps? And at 1.8 volts. What is it about starting a video and things being completely, totally different? Let's turn this power supply off. Guys, I worked on this for a little bit yesterday and I decided this is going to be my next repair video because whenever I checked PP1V8S DRAM, I got three volts. Like, not just like 3.2 or 3, 1 point or 2.78, I got 2.99 volts. I got a perfect three volts. So how, how does that change? I don't, hmm. I've spent a little bit of time looking at the schematics and I've tried to find anything on the board that would have one V8S DRAM as well as a three volt line nearby. And I did come up with TriStar, but this TriStar replacement looks good. I don't think it's gonna be TriStar. I think we should have a look at our little guy out here that gets hot before anything else. And when I say hot, that's not hot. The thermal camera is so sensitive it's just a barely tiny little bit of warmth. Like if I if I hold on to this, I can't feel the heat. I've, I've tried. So yeah, the thermal camera, it's been solving a whole lot of stuff for me. Well, let's, let's see if it'll solve this one. Let's just go for the obvious little thing here that heats up first. Man, that CPU does get hot immediately, doesn't it? But the strobe driver gets hot first. Let's carve it off the board. Let's see, see what happens. Let's get rid of this steaming pile of hogwash. Oh, everybody, I'm loving the quick hot air station. This thing has been brilliant. It didn't take maybe, I don't know, 15 or 20 minutes to get adjusted to it. And I do have to run it at quite a bit higher settings than I did my old hot air station. I'll be honest, that old hot air station had more ass. It just, bar none, it had way more punching through power. This thing, I'm running it on 420 to 450 most of the time, whereas on my other one, I was only at 380. Now, I don't know how accurate that is, but let's get back to this repair, okay? Let's get this clamped into a board holder so that it's not walking around on me while I'm carving on this. Stupid antenna cable out of the way. And I'm going to try to get the CPU over the dense part on this um, on this holder as much as I can. Hardly ever use the heating feature on this. And I did fix it so it don't fly apart no more. I just had to smack it with a hammer. Okay. So now we've got that mounted in a holder. Should be, should be plenty firm. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to throw a uh, nickel over our, just a little shield here. I'd like that to be flat on the CPU, but the SIM tray is in the way. Let's just use it as a shield. So here we are under the microscope. And what I'm gonna do is start carving around this thing. I'm gonna heat it up nice and hot so that this glue comes loose easy. And we're gonna start carving around this. I have been loving these glue removal tools. I got some of these from unionrepair.com and then I got others from uh, geekbar.tools. Oh, 
wonder what's going on with this little thing down here. We're probably going to go ahead and take it off too, just because it looks like it's been flattened onto the board. Tell you what, if this is the component at fault, the company who's been beating their heads against the wall to figure this out, they're probably going to need a drink because they were so damn close. I don't, I'm not convinced we have a CPU short here. Yes, the CPU does heat up. This heats up first though. Oh no, I'm tearing it up. <laughs> All right, I think I can get a blade under there now. Let's use it. Nice. Well, you know what? We need a fresh blade. Let's get that out of here. That's the wrong blades. What in the... How many blades do I have? Where's the rest of my... Does this work? Ha ha ha. Wife finally let me shave my beard off. Man, it's driving me crazy. All right. Some fresh blade. Let's start warming this thing up for the punch, shall we? Show me the money. And don't pop balls out the CPU, mofo. This looks like it's been off here before. That was probably on their list of stuff. Okay, so let's get this out of here. As soon as I detect ball melting, I'll start prying on it. I'm detecting ball melting. Nope, maybe I'm wrong. Is ball melting? I see ball melting over here. All right, here we go. Punch it in there. Boom. It's all right. We don't need all those pads. Pads are overrated. This is data recovery, and I don't need those pads. Fucking pads. All right, so that was nice and easy, wasn't it? That's off the board, wasn't it? Yeah. We'll set this aside and let this cool off for just a minute. And then we're going to hook power up to it and see if we still got a load. Okay, so here we are with the board on the bo a board on the table. And we've got the supply hooked to it. Now we're going to turn the power supply on and see what she draws. We get... Ooh! Zero amperinis. Are we going to say thermal camera for the win? Guys, I've had this board here for a long time. And um, I don't think I would have solved this one without a thermal camera. Now, what are we going to need for this thing to boot? All right, we are going to need chestnut on the board. But should we see if it boots first before I stick chestnut on the board? And also, what else is missing here? Okay, let's, let's just have a look at this. We've gotten rid of the main short. Sort of like yanking out a wisdom tooth, but I still got rid of the main short, by God. Guys, let's go ahead. Herm. Should I see if it boots first? I should see if this boots first, because if I don't check and see if it boots first, then I don't know if me screwing with chestnut has added any more issues. So let's, let's see if this thing boots. Wait, why am I putting a screen on it? Oh, that's right, because I'm an idiot. We don't have chestnut. Okay, so let's hook a power supply to this thing. And what we're going to do to decide if this is booting, I'm just going to watch the load, all right? So now we're going to turn this thing on. We're still drawing a nice zero amperu. And let's push the button to prompt it to boot. Okay, one, two, three. This looks good, 90 milliamps. Ooh, she's hanging at 90. Is it in DFU? Nope, 130, 150. I'm getting excited. You know, I don't watch sports, but I can get into this. Some days I'm just like, oh, and I'm ready to just jump up and yeah! This board's booting. Why did I measure three volts on one V8S DRAM? I'm not making this up and like I wasn't half asleep. I was a very I was very clear minded. This is good. This looks like I'm actually going to get the data out of this phone. And this is not the way I expected this video to go. Like I was hoping to be able to demonstrate my thermal camera really well and also show everybody how to adjust a cheaper camera to do really, really good stuff. 
but I was not expecting to recover the data off of this phone. I thought because I seen three volts on one V8S RAM and it had been there for eons that this phone would never, ever, ever boot. I think this is booting. So let's see, uh, okay, I've disconnected it from the power supply. Let me see if I can find me a chestnut IC. Uh, 653730AOP. There we go. Says I got 20 of them. I wonder how many's left in the package. Okay. So here is my brand spanking new chestnut ICs. Ugh. Ooh. There are four of them left in there. Somebody needs to get on the ball and order some hardware, man. Ooh. Goodness. Let's get this back under the microscope and throw a chestnut IC on it. See if I can get the data out of this phone. Are the touch ICs on it? Ah, yes, we've got touch. All right, so let's begin doctoring up our chestnut sack, a uh, chestnut area of the board. Now, I need to dress up these pads, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my hot air, and I'm going to start warming this board up here. I'm going to put some flux on that, and we're just going to warm this up and smooth out these pads. When these guys watch this video, they're going to want to break stuff. Because they were so close, man. They almost got the data off of this phone. If they would have just... If they would have just followed this rabbit hole a little farther, they might have found the heat signature coming out of that stinking strobe driver. Now, in all fairness, guys, you will notice that the stuff that they screwed with on the board does have PP1V8 SDRAM going to it. So I wonder if me getting that 3-volt reading adds another layer of um, uncertainty to this uh, because I know it was there. I, I seen it with my own eyes and I decided it was most likely going to be a showstopper and I had also decided that they were chasing down a demon caused by high voltage because if you take and put 3 volts through these 1.8 volt lines something is going to get hot. So I thought it was all the things that had 1 V8 SDRAM running to it that was getting hot. Now I do not want to put unnecessary stress on things here, so we're going to be reballing this IC. This is a brand spanking new Texas Instruments um, display driver here that's used on oh, basically every single iPhone. I'm, I'm not sure what they're using in the new new models, but this is good for, um, for a lot of phones. Let's go ahead and get these nasty lead-free balls off of here because that's a freaking joke anyways. I need to greatly lower our melting temperature, okay? And honestly, I should have went ahead and flooded the PCB with more lead, uh, leaded solder, but I'm just, I, I didn't. So we've sort of just roughly sucked up the lead-free garbage off of that IC, and now we're going to add a little bit of alcohol to it, and we're going to clean this off spick and span now. These people are going to be really happy that I got their data. You know what? I better shut up because I don't have their data yet. <sighs> All right, so here we've got our chestnut IC. Let's throw some new balls on this thing. All right, let's. Oh, you know what? I think I was abusing my stencils and I was using, I was naughty and I used my chestnut cut out for something else, right? Oh. I do thoroughly enjoy the sleep feature of this new quick station because it's almost like having a free hand. I don't have to push a button. I can just reach up, grab the hot air, and it's on, and it don't vibrate my microscope no more. Dun, 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 dun. All right. Now, I'm not going to heat that once more. I'm going to leave it just like it is. Wait, I might have to heat it once more to get it off the table. Yeah, she's stuck pretty good.
I did it anyways. All right, so now we have a brand spanking new chestnut IC with beautiful non-hairy leaded balls. Now I'm gonna clean up my tools and my spot on the bench here so I don't lay my arm in that crap. There we go. There we go. Scrub with the stencil there. Eh? Okay, we're ready to put this IC on the board. I am gonna add just a smidgen, that was a smidgen, of fresh flux. And we're going to grab our tiny little IC. Let's inspect its tiny little balls one last time. Oops. Those of you watching my channel know that I am a professional ball inspector. I'm also an idiot when it comes to this board holder. Okay, let's get this thing lined up here since it keeps sticking to stuff. We can see where the dot is. I don't know if you can, but I can. And we're going to squeeze that down in there just like that. All right, that's the way that is going to go. Let's start warming this thing up. Shall we? Airflow feels a little high. Yeah, it is a little high. I'm on the wrong channel. There we go. Right now I'm set to 430C at an airflow of 40. Okay, let's get a good look at where all of our balls are. And get a good feel of how these balls are lining up. Now since I switched this to leaded, this will be a lot easier. Okay. The flux should be pretty hard now, so I'm going to back away. And we're going to start heating this up to get it to drop. It's on there. Okay, guys. Anybody want to place any bets as to whether or not I'm going to get the data off of this phone? Uh, let's see. Let's let this thing cool off. Let's dump that coin out of the way. Those coins stay really hot for a really, really long time. Okay, now we are ready to go for the gold, all right? So let's grab a 6-plus housing here that's got a good dock flex in it. Does that? No, I don't have a good dock flex. That's a steaming pile of hog manure. Oh, look at this. This one has a dock flex rip, too. Gosh, I need to get some better test housings up in here. This is horrible. All right, let me get a test housing. And let's go ahead and slip this board into a housing. I'm excited. I've spent the last, uh, oh gosh, ever since you guys see me melting down on YouTube about having bad jobs and things not going so well, I have spent the last, however long that's been, going nuts catching up. And if you've had to get bad news from me, I'm sorry, but for those of you that I've been able to give good news to, it makes me feel really, really, really good. All right, so we've got... Dock flex, we're going to go ahead and hook up image, touch. I'm going to go ahead and plug in the home button and the front flex here just so that they don't accidentally short out on anything. Okay. Let's hook a DC power supply up, guys, and see if this boots. I've got a good feeling. <clears throat> All right. We've got the supply hooked up. I'm going to turn it on. Do we get a load? We don't get a load. Good. I like not getting a load. All right. Let's turn it on. Okay. Power baton in one, two, three, go. Image. We're going to get the data, guys. All right. <clears throat> passcode. I know this has a passcode. I know this has a passcode. That three volts on one V8S drum really, really. Really screws with me. Do I really not have a passcode for this phone? What? Is it written on the phone? Wait, it was in the ticket. That's right. All right, let's get that ticket back on the screen. Can you guys still see this phone? We're, we're, stick, we're stuck at an Apple logo at the moment, uh, but I do believe it's going to boot. Uh, current is right now, you can see it's about a half an amp. All right, where's this customer's ticket? Because they've got me a passcode. All right, I've got the passcode on my screen. 
I have got... Got to get a cable going to iTunes here because I'm all discombobulated. I just seen that screen went off. Oh, I see a, I see a lock screen, guys. All right, we're hooked up to iTunes. And we're probably going to have to get a good battery hook to this. Let's see. Uh, okay, I'm going to go ahead and slide the power off, and we're going to do this on a good battery. I'm not confident at all that this thing's acting weird, man. You guys seeing this? No, you can't see this. I'm not sure. Do we not have touch? All right, let's go ahead. <clears throat> let's go ahead and get a good battery hooked up to this thing here. See, I set one aside just in case. I think it booted without touch. All right, we're going to prompt a boot by plugging in our lightning cable. All right, Apple Laga. I think this battery's full or. At least it measures like 4.3 volts. I don't know what it thinks it is, but I know it's dang near full. All right, let's not uh, this boot it up with like his kids or something on it. I think we're going to get the data off of this. If it doesn't have touch, then I'm going to have to dig in and do uh, touch IC repair. I did not think this video was going to go like this. I thought this video was going to end in failure, but I wanted to use it as an opportunity to show you a really unique situation with the three volts that I sent on, seen on 1V8 SDRAM. Maybe I'm just crazy. I could swear. Nevertheless, we're going to try to back this up right away. So I thought it was going to be a good opportunity to show you a really unique situation and also show how I've been using this thermal camera. Um, I use this thing constantly. Like, I really wish I would have bought it sooner. Okay, let's see if we get touch. Come on, ice cream. Did we get touch? We got touch, guys. All right. I'm going to press home to unlock. There's no passcode on it. Let's go ahead and say trust. Okay, I've been able to successfully trust it. I just clicked backup and now this thing is absolutely positively going to run a backup. Gosh, I did not think that this was going to be a successful recovery. I planned on digging in on this with the full intentions of failing, but I was at least going to use it to show you a demonstration on my camera and um, show why I thought these people were chasing down a demon. Like I thought they were chasing down all the stuff that was on PP1V8 SDRAM because there was an overvolt situation on PP1V8 SDRAM, which could easily cause things on that line to heat up. So I thought that's what we were dealing with, with uh, what I was seeing on a thermal camera. And I didn't really dig into it that far. Like I'm sure I could have found uh, other stuff on that line. I think both backlight drivers get one V8 SDRAM, but if they're not, I, I don't know what pen is on. Is it an Able or uh, whatever? We're not going to go into all that. So Nevertheless, guys, I did not expect this video to go this way. Um, this is going to be a successful recovery. I'm going to sit here and not breathe on this until this thing finishes backing up. It's a 128 gig phone that's com that's half full. So there's a lot of data here. And I'm really looking forward to giving this customer good news. Um, it's been a, a crazy few weeks things, getting things cleared out and ready for our vacation. But uh, guys, that is going to be the end of this video. Uh, I do thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please click thumbs up. If you don't like the video, click thumbs down. Feel free to leave your comments below. I don't have time to respond to all of them, but I do read every single one of them. And um, yeah, that's it for now. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good day. I'll see you soon. I'll be right back. Are you dirty little camera? Oh, you. Oh, you sexy little camera. Oh, yeah. Dirty camera. You get back on the bench. I'm trying to make a video. Camera can't keep its thermal imaging off of me.
Let's go play thermal camera for our YouTube viewers. Let's do it in the kitchen. Look, you see his footsteps. Hang on, let me adjust it. All right, walk around the floor. Draw on the floor. Yeah, look at this. It's so sensitive you can write on the floor. Let's do, let's do this one. All right, move your foot. That's so cool. You can see everywhere we've been huddling around standing and stuff. This thing is so awesome. Was it hot water? Yeah, turn your hot water in. See, I wouldn't be able to have all this fun if I went with the bench top model. That water's not hot yet. That's cold water. Your mom's got hot water in the sink over here. What about the hot water in that? It's not hot yet. Now that water's hot. Sweet. Wait a minute, I see warm bodies on the couch. You're holding a cold rag. I don't even have to see it, I can tell it's cold. Kevin Porter, guidance counselor. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Kevin. 